Hi, and welcome to another video in our Coded Test Series. My name is Jeff Fortin, and I'm a product manager here at Vector. And I'll be showing you just a basic introduction of how to get stubbing working within Coded Tests. So I'm going to start uh, just showing you the help file for it. We have a help file within the VectorCast distribution, and you can actually see where it's located in the distribution by looking at the top here. And it gives you an introduction and uh, some basic setup of how to set up a mock session. I wanted to just show you this so you see where the help file is so you can refer to it uh, when we are done with the video or as you're watching this video. So within it, it shows you how to set up the mocks, how to be able to call the mocks within your test, uh, assigning return values. All of this is described within the help file itself. And I'm just sc scrolling through it slowly so that you can see and at the bottom are the examples. And I've actually based the example I'll show you in this video uh, with the example that is included here, just slightly differently. I wanted to show some, some different things. Okay, so that's the help file, and I'll just switch over to VectorCast now. And we, in the last video, I showed you how to set up Coded Test, so if you're not familiar with that, I'd ask you to refer to that video. And I have the uh, source file for the Coded Test already here. Within here, you can see some different things. These are the mocks that I've set up for these two tests. I've got two tests, mock test one and mock test two, I'm very creative with names. And within here, I have the mocks and the sessions that are, the session that will set up the mock for each one of these tests. So I've just highlighted it there. The details are found within the help file itself, but just to review some of the parts, um, you can see that I have a mock here for this database uh, update table record uh, with the signature that's required to set it up as a mock, including this very important uh, call CTX. And with, here is the mock code itself. So I'm just checking for uh, a value to be uh, checked against the expected value for the check total. I am disabling the mock and then calling the actual function itself. This is also described in the help file, but this is useful if you actually need to call the real function within the mock function. You first need to disable the function, then call it, and then re-enable uh, the mock. So that's an example of what a mock looks like. Down here is my test, and you can see I've set up the mock session and then set up that update table record as one of the mocks that will be included in this section. I've got some setup for the test itself. There I'm setting the check uh, value uh, total, check total value, uh, calling or setting up manager and making a call for the place order uh, within manager itself for the table zero and for the, uh, for the order, which has been set up at the top. This expected value check total is what the cost is for a lobster. And once I call place order, I want to check within that mock function to make sure that the check is set to 18. If we go back up to the uh, top again, you can see that I'm checking that uh, expected total within this uh, EQ function. And if that is correct, then I will have a successful test run. Okay, so that shows setting up a mock itself, uh, calling, uh, uh, setting up the mocks within the test itself, calling a mock function uh, by way of calling this place order, which calls the function that's being mocked, and then checking uh, some, uh, making some checks to make sure that the values that were passed around are correct. So if I run this test, I'll go through and I'll see the code coverage that was covered during that test. And if I look at the test itself, I can look at the execution report and see that those EQ values that I have set up within the test uh, have all passed and they're all, all of the actuals are equal to the expected. So that's a quick setup just based on the uh, instructions that we have for, in the documentation for coded tests, calling the, uh, the mocks within the tests themselves, and then showing the results uh, from the mocks. Hope this was helpful to you, and thank you very much.